Welcome back to Epic Airsoft HD. This week we have the long-awaited Silverback PP-19 Bison 2. Uh, this is a Russian submachine gun replica and it is a pretty good one at that. Uh, having a look at the externals, most of it being uh, pressed steel. Uh, some very little parts, pot metal, so uh, it's all good there. I got all you guys have seen this from Battlefield 3 and Call of Duty, likes of game, computer games like that. Uh, not a very popular gun to try and find on YouTube actually for any real steel, real steel kind of stuff but I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that out. This one's modelled on the 9x18 cartridge which is a uh, Soviet uh, round. Uh, this in real steel would be 64 rounds of ammunition held in there and this is actually the magazine. Someone asked me on Facebook, will this take AK mags? Kill yourself. Seriously. <laughs> this is a proprietary magazine. Uh, and it comes off. Looks like a big grenade launcher torch or something like that. I joked about it in Scout the Doggies videos. Had a shot of this uh, not too long ago. But uh, 160 round mid, mid cap type mag. Uh, rattles quite a bit, you can hear that in the mic, but that's because of the real steel uh, thing. This would actually wind the real rounds up into uh, the receiver of the gun. So, bit of a let down. I guess you could put something in there to jam it in and stop it from rattling about, but uh, ah, minor problems. First world yourself problems. We'll stick this back in again. Quite awkward to get in and line it up properly. You don't want to hit it too hard if it's not lined up right because you're going to damage the gun or the magazine and that's no good thing because these are 25 pounds a piece. Quite expensive for mags. Actually, to be honest, not as expensive as I thought it would be. This is the pressed steel part up here. Uh, it's basically a heat shield. It's very similar to the AKSU type, uh, only in metal instead of wood. Front uh, side post is Pretty good, very clear sights, uh, rear sight aperture as well, and you can actually get down on it quite good. It's quite tall, um, so it's good. You can actually get a good cheek weld on there, and when you bring it up to eye level, the sights are much better than a, a regular AK, in my opinion, anyway. Front flash hider is pretty nice, replica of the real steel, so they've actually gone to a lot of effort to get it right. On this side of the receiver, you've also got your mount for putting uh, your Cobra sight or one of these uh, res adapters that you get so you can put your own sight on there. But to be honest, I think it looks good just the way it was designed and supposed to be. Uh, folding stock, bit of a problem with this one. Uh, I don't know if this is particular to this gun we have in specific or all the models by the back, but you'll see it on there in the close-up shots. It doesn't quite line up and when the magazine is, it, is in, it makes it even worse to try and get in there. I'll try and pull this up. Take two hands, so by this point we've already been killed by the enemy, trying to get it in there, and that's it of course locked in there. Uh, to get it back out again, much easier with the magazine in, but uh, still pretty difficult. So I'll do this, hopefully we'll get no cuts on this and we'll see how long it takes to get off. There we go. Folding stock shouldn't be that hard to take off in my opinion, so Silverback, get that fixed for us please. Uh, especially with the price tag of £400 in the UK, that is absolutely ridiculous. I won't be adding this to my airsoft armory anytime soon. Battery compartment, as most AKs, is located up here in the top half of the receiver. This, of course, is quite stiff as well. That's a good thing because we don't want that rattling around there and making the noise. Battery just goes in here, stick type, and uh, it doesn't come with the gun. Uh, this kind of gun just manual, gun, and mag. That's all you get with this. Uh, we'll pull back on the charging handle while this, off, this is off here. You'll see the hop unit is AK type, so good to know that it's compatible with all AK hop unit types. You can get upgrades into this gun, get your favourite kit inside there. Gearbox is of course version 3, so you can upgrade as much as you want and as you like. Nice positive lock in there, That's still a wee bit of rattle. Big niggle with this particular gun as well, uh, the fire selector is very loose. In fact, I'll put it up to the microphone as well. Pet hate, you need to get this sorted out. Uh, this is absolutely horrendous. What they've actually done is, you can't tighten it up uh, like you would normally do. You experienced guys, although I guess you at least experienced guys will not know this. Uh, you can actually tighten it up by tightening this lug here. Problem is, Silverback have super glued it into the gearbox. Now that's gonna pose a problem, right? You experienced guys have had the comics box, how ridiculous that is. Uh, there's a serious wobble on there and actually it's engaged in fully automatic when I lift it up here and it's not clicked into place so you just get a wobble between there it can fall down uh, I've already tested this and it's semi-auto and that is an absolute pain in the ass okay let's get it in the vise and we'll do a 30 meter range test on this gun 
Okay, so now we're on the shoot and test uh, bench. I've cleaned the barrel, of course, quite gunked up, but that's to expect because the gun is brand spanking new. All guns have dirty barrels. If you guys buy a new gun, always, always clean it. We've got a tutorial video for that. You can click up there and that annotation that will take you to that if you don't know how to do it. All right, we're using 0.3 gram Devil Blaster BBs. That's because they're good value for money and they give us really good accuracy results compared to other brands of BBs. Uh, Mad Bull are about the best, but they're really expensive to do it and not a lot of people buy them. So uh, that's a really good benchmark BB to use. We've got our reputable company's uh, battery in here. It's a VP Racing 8.4 volt NIM stick battery. And it's actually got a really good rate of fire, which you'll hear when we do the full auto test. All right, this is semi-auto first. I'm gonna send about 10 rounds downrange at the target. All right, we're all the way down in semi, let's go for it. We'll fire another couple. All right, we'll move on to the full auto test and we'll have a look at the targets. Okay, we'll set up a new target on the range and we're gonna go fully auto. I've got everything ready, so let's just go ahead and do that. There we go. That's a rate of fire on an 8.4 volt NIM battery. If you get an 11.1 in there or even a decent, really good uh, 9.6 stick battery, that is going to be blistering. Excellent performance out of this gearbox wise. Uh, so let's have a look at the targets before we wrap up this review. All right, let's have a look at the targets and what we're all been waiting for. All right, let's see the full auto one first before I show you the spectacular semi-auto test. All right, on fully automatic, for a gun that size and length of barrel, everyone expects longer barrels to do better for some reason. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's almost worth paying £400 for that. To get an upgraded gun uh, to shoot as good as that is really difficult. So spending 400 quid on a gun that just shoots that good is awesome. Uh, there's a few niggles with the gun. I bet you thought I was going to give it a bad review as well, but uh, it seems to be worth its money. Pretty good, that's three times. Okay. Semi-automatic test, absolutely brutal. If you're aiming for a chest area on someone at 30 meters, you are guaranteed to hit them every bloody time. The closest guns you've got to this is a VSR Bar 10. Uh, that WAP226 that was made of Magic and uh, the MP18, of course, which was an even more expensive gun than this one. So uh, absolutely legendary, legendary accuracy on that semi auto uh, Also worth, uh, mentioning is the range on the gun. I had this out of section eight with Scout the Doggy. The range on it is absolutely tremendous. This gun is actually shooting just a tad over 350, uh, but uh, that is, <laughs> there you go. This goes to show you that FPS isn't everything. Uh, and of course, upgrades aren't everything. You can just buy a gun that's straight out of the box. It shoots well. Uh, I can't afford the 400 pounds, but if you can, worthwhile investment, I would say. Uh, the stock issue and the, of course, the, the rattles in it, is, uh, I mean, they can be fixed, I guess, if you spend enough time on it. Uh, to take you back to the shooting review, guys, just click up on that annotation there. Uh, of course, you can go straight back to the beginning of the review and click on this annotation down here as well. If you want to check out that bar 10, uh, sorry, the VSR 10, not the cheap version, the token review version, you can click up on this annotation here. that will take you straight to the shooting test of that. Uh, also, uh, to check out another Russian gun, you can click down there and check out the awesome uh, real sword Droganov. Absolutely great piece of work. And we'll stick a special video down there, a video I've done with uh, my parkour friends, uh, parkour versus airsoft, in an abandoned zombie type seminary. What more can I say? Check it out, uh, hit them a like. Hit us a like in the video as well if you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss all, all of our gun reviews every single Sunday. And we'll see you next week.